maker. Um, yeah, so what are my learning experiences um, so far? Well, again, I underestimated how complex it actually is. Also, where the complexity lied or where I expected the complexity to be. I thought that most of it was actually in the modeling, the 3D modeling of the Skyhawk itself, but that was just like drawing. That's just, that's, that's more an artistic um, task of Playmaker. Uh, the real complexity lies again at the end with the cruising speeds and stuff where all of the stuff that you did before needs to be right in order to get those cruising speed and fuel burns um, according to the tables. And, and all of those variables interrelate, and that's where the complexity lies. What I also learned is how important it is to trust X-Plane and to first look for the numbers. Uh, if I already started more pragmatically and just put in some numbers, then I had a factor of five more variables to consider when I did my fly test. Now I knew that many numbers were right according to the, to the manuals, uh, and there were only a few that I made up myself because I didn't find the numbers in manuals or online or whatever, um, which made it much more easy. I could much more focus on the variables that I knew were wrong or most likely offset, um, which made the flight testing much more easy. Um, another thing, um, again, uh, again, um, honoring uh, Rush and Aer Aerosim Gaming, who came on the stream uh, a while ago, um, it made a lot of sense um, that there's a difference in development in terms of the objective development of the aircraft and the subjective uh, development. As I, I, as I already said just a second ago, um, the first stage is getting the numbers, the objective numbers of your Skyhawk. And I should have actually spent a little bit more time doing my research before I started with Playmaker. So I did a lot of searching while I was using Playmaker, which was fun. But um, look at all of the references stuff that we found so far in terms of airfoils. Um, also just the sketches. We took several streams to get the right sketches. And I also found out too late that this sketch was actually offset. It, it, it's the right sketch, but as you can see, this is the chord size, uh, the chord line, uh, center line of the Skyhawk. And so this entire picture should actually be tilted. The tail of the aircraft should actually go up so that this chord line is absolutely straight, leveled. Um, because that's how, um, according to, to that leveled state, that's where the, all of the other, um, um, the, for example, the front view is set by. So this, this front view of the Skyhawk is set according to a Skyhawk where that tail is up, where that court line, this court line here is completely straight and level. And I didn't know about that before. So I was really modeling in Playmaker only to find out later that that was the case and I need to redo the entire airframe. Well, that's um, that's not really efficient work. So if I would do this one more, if I needed to do this, redo this project, um, I would spend a, a bit more time in um, getting all of the manuals uh, in the ready and also reading them and studying them so I already know where the information is. So I'm much quicker much more effective, straightforward when developing in, uh, in Playmaker. But again, you're, I was so curious just to work with Playmaker, just jumped right in, but that's the price you pay. Um, yeah. Other thing in terms of resources where you can find stuff, obviously there are many, many manuals. Scribd, highly recommended. Scribd, a website, scribd.com. I already knew about it vaguely and never used the site before, but I found so many documents um for the 172 pilots that just share valuable information technical reports and stuff uh old ones as well um, the service menu for example so much information that you cannot find in the usual poa so script highly recommended as a resource the other is ebay many pilots or aircraft engineers sell their aircraft components for example the spinner i could i could not find the dimensions of the spinner but perhaps there's a seller on ebay that sells a spinner people sell that stuff and uh, show you the uh, dimensions. Usually because they like to be complete and detailed, they provide more detailed information than you can find um, in a manual. So eBay is also a, uh, an, a resource not to overlook in terms of looking for the right information. And the other one is manufacturers. Uh, also took some time for me to get that. Uh, for example, with the propeller, rather than searching through all of the 172 manuals, 
the propeller is not made by Cessna, it's made by another guy, another company. So look for the manual for that company. Uh, and there you can find technical data. Um, basic, I guess, but that's important. Um, yes, um, also in terms of objectivity, um, I thought that for most of the information that we can find here in Playmaker, we can actually find numbers in manuals. Um, I was quite silly, I guess, uh, very naive. So obviously Playmaker is made for us Playmaker developers, for us, us Plane developers for X-Plane, and it provides all kinds of information specifically for a simulator. So a lot of information is you cannot find on Google or on manuals. Um, and yeah, if I cannot summarize all of the stuff that you can find in manuals, you need to review all of my previous videos um, in order to get that information. Uh, but well, for example, with those flaps that we were uh, talking about, um, um, in terms of the coefficients of lift and drag, um, that's stuff that you need to figure out yourself by just test flying. So that's another insight, I guess, related to that. Test flying had a much more significant role in working in Playmaker. I thought that flight testing was much more like a summative evaluation. You just put in your design in Playmaker and then you just test fly it once and you notice, ah, it flies like it should. Well, wrong tim that's oh, that's not how it works test flying is an integral part of working in playmaker and now i understand for example with the um, with the fuel burn it's going back and forth back and forth back and forth and you need to get some meditative zen mindset on to get those numbers right um and well i guess passion for what you're doing um and um yeah it's much more iterative um switching between playmaker and explain um, that's about the main thing about Playmaker, I guess. So first, spend as much time about getting those objective numbers uh, right, uh, but be sure not to be sure not to spend too much time on finding numbers that 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 are not available um, in uh, on, on Google or on manuals. Uh, waste of time. Uh, that's something that you need to test fly. But get those numbers first. Um, really spend some time. Um, grabbing those manuals, uh, studying those manuals, but that that helps you in such such tremendously uh, later on when you need to do all of those complex flight tests uh, because everything inter inter interacts, all of those variables interacts, and so the more you know is according to the numbers, um, the f only a few variables are left that you can work with to tweak your aircraft, and that makes life a lot more easy. Um, yeah, so only do the tweaking and work around. For example, this stuff. Um, don't do this at the beginning, but only at the initial, or at the end phase of your flight test when you're going to optimize your aircraft. First, make it like it should look like, as if X-Plane was perfect. Um, really, really important. Other thing, I guess, when I'm noticing the uh, exhaust pipe here, we also worked on the pitot tube and some others, and also the winglets. Um, I don't know about frame rates. I initially thought it was a concern when I was making my Skyhawk, like if I make too many objects or miscellaneous bodies or objects here in my plane, uh, would that also have an, uh, a serious effect on frame rates? Uh, because we like to have a smooth aircraft, uh, obviously, in terms of frame rates. Um, and um, that's not a really significant worry, I guess. Um, also, the winglets I removed, um, the pitot tube I removed. I think I can even remove the exhaust pipe and not notice any significant difference in the flight performance. So you can make this physics or mathematical model of your airplane as, as complex as possible, um, but without seeing any significant change or differences in flight performance. So rather keep it simple. Um, than that. Uh, I, I added this one because of my care. It has a very small drag coefficient. Um, <coughs> but truthfully, um, I could just as easily remove it. Um, that's about Playmaker, I think. The most... Oh yeah, and the other thing was, uh, I think I would, well, it's not, also not a biggie. Um, I should have started with this one actually first. Um, the difference between the physical mathematical mo model that x is using, this model, and the model uh, that we're actually going to see. So for example, if we open up a Laminar's um, 172, you'll see what I'm referring to. 
So this is the default 172 by Lemonar. And as you can see, it looks fancy. And I initially thought, can I do this in Playmaker? Make, make this fancy visual texturing? Um, no, you can give it textures, textures though, your aircraft, but you cannot make a 3D cockpit and all of these animations. No, that's not what Playmaker is for. Playmaker is primarily just making the aircraft model that it flies like a Skyhawk. Making your aircraft look like your aircraft, you do in an external with a third party 3D modeling software. I'm gonna use Blender uh, soon, so that's still work that I need to start with, I need to study. Um, so what you see here is actually two models in Playmaker, that fancy 3D model that is loaded into Playmaker plus the mathematical model that X-Plane is actually seeing to make the airplane fly like it should. And I can show you uh, invisible parts. So now you see the fancy model. Um, now we loaded up the, as you can see, the gray blobby mathematical model and it should be very, very similar, obviously, in terms of shape. Um, it's not that similar, but um, it should mimic. Um, and now we can remove the visual model and now you see the actual Cessna that uh, X-Plane is seeing when we're flying the default 172, at least visually here. Um, so you actually make two models. and. So some, some of you said to me when I was modeling this model uh, or my own model in x -Plane, that I shouldn't spend too much time making all the curves right here because that's actually more Blender stuff, th fancy 3D modeling stuff that x -Plane doesn't care about, at least the physical aerodynamic rendering. And you're right, at least I'm still quite pleased that I did so. Uh, look, at it has a weird shape and I it's off, uh, but it's more for the sake of my own pleasure than uh, aircraft performance. Um, so in that sense, the actual 3D modeling that you can do in, in Playmaker, it should be obviously according to the numbers and please be as specific as possible, as correct, as precise as possible. But it's usually the numbers in the menus that really make the difference, not so much the model itself and how it looks like. Um, it, it, it makes more difference than I was told so, I think, in terms of, for example, the, the, the prop radius and the wings and the cord sizes, they do affect the stall speeds and stuff. Um, I initially thought that some of you said, well, don't don't care about the fancy model, just the numbers and you're done. Uh, now, obviously the thing needs to has, has wings and at the right angle and blah, 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 blah. So it does matter, but the real fancy Finishing touches, uh, don't bother. That's really uh, the, the Blender uh, 3D modeling uh, side of things. Um, that's Playmaker. Now, the brother of Playmaker, the brother application uh, or sister or whatever is Airfoil Maker. That's also shipped with uh, X-Plane. Now, Airfoil Maker is about, as the name suggests, the airfoils that we're using. And we're not only using an airfoil for the wings, but actually also for the prop uh, is an airfoil and also the struts and the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. And the what the airfoil maker is doing almost exclusively, at least in my mind, based off of my test flights, is mostly angle of attacks. It also has drag and moment, but I didn't really notice that much of a difference. Um, it's mostly at one angle of attack are you gonna see a stall, the green, line curve here is lift um, and that's important um, there's no way to get that angle of attack through playmaker uh, playmaker is more about the stall speed and again that's an important remark stall speeds and stuff is a very important testing for stall speeds is very important the actual stall speed is cord size wing surface and cg a bit uh, center of gravity but mostly cord size and the angle of attack is airfoil maker business and you use the two uh, and in terms of my flight testing, I only, I, I did not tweak this. Uh, I just set this according to, again, go back to my Airfoil Maker streams, videos of a while ago, set this according to real world data. Again, not specific for the 172, could not find it for many aircraft. You cannot really find aircraft specific data on this, these plots. Uh, but uh, I did tweak the default to airfoils here. Um, and that's about it. So I, I expected to spend a lot more time in Airfoil Maker, making the Skyhawk fly like it should, but it was actually quite the opposite. I did not spend that much time in Airfoil Maker, perhaps also because I'm a noob and I don't quite understand the depth of this. Um, also Airfoil Maker, as I understand by Rush, um, uh, from Rush, um, is, 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 is still a quite simplified Airfoil assessment tool or design tool. 
Um, still though, for a beginner, it looks quite complex. It's very interesting to, to learn about what all of these numbers mean. Um, and it's so weird now that when I look at this, I understand what I'm doing, um, at least for most parts. So that's, that's, that's really interesting. So Airfall Maker is about uh, angle of attacks um, and was actually a, a minor chunk, a smaller chunk of my development so far in comparison to Playmaker where actually um, the real core of my work went into, uh, most of my work went into. Um, in terms of Airfall Maker, yeah, you just revisit that video and you'll you'll see the resources. Not much in, in terms of this review or summary that I can mention about that, actually. Um, the only thing is, yeah, I thought that it was actually, yeah, it's only the angle of attack. All of the other stuff that you see here, I thought that it would really significantly change or alter the flight performance. According to my flight tests, barely. So it's plane maker. That's, uh, that's where you should focus on primarily. Getting those numbers first. And then subjective adjustments so that it flies, subjectively flies like a Skyhawk or like your the, the aircraft that you're working on. Um, yes, and that completes my review, I think, of Plane Maker and Airform Maker. Um, wow, it's so weird that I've become familiar with these apps. Uh, I know what when I just opened it up uh, and I thought, oh my gosh. Um, I mean, if we just do new, uh, don't save. And we also didn't have a background image. This is where we started with uh, at the beginning of the new year. Just a tube. And from this, from scratch, we made our own Skyhawk. Um, and if you're interested, go back to those first episodes and you can follow me along. Um, and you can make your own aircraft as well, or silly aircraft, or do all kinds of alterations of already existing aircraft. Playmaker is really, really fun and I learned so much, not only about Playmaker and Airfall Maker, but aerodynamics. Um, so as a serious student pilot, uh, I really appreciate that gain knowledge. Appreciation also for aircraft development, by the way, but also about what makes an aircraft fly and go forward and left tendencies and why do I need to make coordinated turns. And so uh, I can recommend making an airplane to any serious student pilot just for becoming a better pilot or appreciative pilot, I guess. Um, save changes. Uh, don't save. Now, hoping that X-Plane will stay stable. 